2012, week one of Playground Drama Day Camp. My name is Ted. I'm Dan. I'm Mark. Uh, Mark and Dan and I sat down in a restaurant in New York City seven years ago and took out some napkins and mapped out some ideas. Um, and what you will see today is the 14th week, both national and international, including the Paul Newman Hole in the Wall camps that we've helped out over in Italy uh, of Playground Drama Day Camp. We'd like to give our special thanks to Karen West. Karen, where are you? Raise your hand. College uh, Foundations, Carnahan Jackson Humanities Fund, who believed in this project and helped this thing get off the ground. Tom Lachlan and Tom Profit, professors here in the Department of Theater and Dance, Eric Hadley, and all the Rockefeller Arts Center staff who you'll see around you, our house managers and our ushers, as well as our ticket office personnel, um, and the student account staff who many of you uh, worked with this summer. Make sure your child can come to the playground. Next week on this stage, you can see the senior playground players in Disney's Beauty and the Beast, Junior, same time, same theater. Um, how does year six, right? Yeah, year six. Year six feel? Feels great. Feels <laughs> great. Yeah, Mark's just been waiting for the other shoe to fall all week. <laughs> we had power outages. We, the, your, your boys and girls don't know uh, the difference between rehearsing with real light or emergency light anymore. <laughs> started in 2007, we had, we did Annie, Annie Jr. <laughs> we had 45 boys and girls in that. This 2012, we're doing Sleeping Beauty. Beauty and Beast, and there's 110 boys and girls and counting enrolled this summer, um, which is exciting. You can also search Playground Drama Day Camp on Facebook, where you can find photos that are complimentary for you, uh, as well as video for you and your families. Um, you're about to say, I've been thinking about this, and maybe you guys can tell me. Um, Sleeping Beauty for you is about what? Um, Sleeping Beauty for me is about, you know, like friendship, overcoming the odds, and working together as, as a team is a, a big picture for me. I was joking earlier, I said I wish that was misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> misunderstood wish. Thank you, Dan. And now back to our regular discussion. That's why we work so well together. Um, the, uh, the other idea that we had was it's about a girl who thinks she's one thing and finds out she's worth so much more or something so much more. And worth is a strange word, and I don't want that to come across the wrong way. But it's about finding out who we really are inside. It's about fighting dragons that get in the way to make sure that we can get to what we saw once upon a dream. Uh, today's production of Sleeping Beauty uh, was cast Monday. Monday they cast it. They launched into rehearsals. Uh, Mark and everyone went uh, four days technical address today, a little bit yesterday and today. Uh, and these are mornings only because Dan in the afternoons. Right there, I uh, said a cycle of three classes, a rotation that changed every day. There were acting classes. Um, offered almost every day, uh, dance classes um, offered by teachers here and guest artists. We also had two technical theater classes, a musical theater workshop. Um, we also were able to do a scavenger hunt this year to sort of talk about storytelling. So there was a lot of compass in the afternoon in addition to the uh, rehearsals in the morning. Seven of our players, and come on out and receive your applause, chose a technical theater focus this week. <laughs>
Don't know. Okay. Some of the other things that we did were uh, we helped with CD players, with designing the set, selecting props, getting those props from storage, helping out with costumes, and Jen Davis, a brilliant costume designer, um, dressing and hanging sets. So once again, please give them a round of applause. Sword today, who's on set backstage today? So they're going to be like ninjas. What are you doing, buddy? Your light board today, $40,000 light board right here. <laughs> you won't see them today because they're our, our backstage ninjas, but they, they uh, are making this show happen. So go get them. Go get your place. program that you have in your hand is all because of this man. Lee, please stand up. <laughs> That's really how Playground comes together, is by people who volunteer. There will never be enough patronage for something like this. It's not done with money. It's done out of love. And um, we thank you for that. Uh, for many of these boys and girls, this will be their first time on the stage um, in front of people. And what does that teach? Um, for, for me, that teaches confidence. Um, it, it teaches that you can, I mean, um, you can be anything that you want to be or that you set your mind to be. Confidence, teamwork, communication with other people um, instead of on a telephone. I mean, just things like that that we take for granted that we didn't have. We didn't have, you know, Facebook and FaceTime and all that stuff. So kind of getting back to that, just communicating with people and telling a story that way instead of through YouTube or TV. They are YouTube. They are the YouTube. You know, they're making it happen um, as opposed to watching it happen. You saw colorful hats uh, and swords and shields out in the lobby. Dan, you want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. There's a more, uh, uh, program in the morning called Artastic run by uh, the excellent Amy Garonsky uh, and uh, Mrs. Cars, and both of them work together with the uh, Children in the Morning. It's an early morning drop-off program that allows them to uh, come in, socialize a little bit in the morning, but also make these stellar, stellar art projects. So outside, you'll see a number of hats, you'll see a number of um, uh, swords, and you'll see a number of shields that were made all in the morning by these campers. Uh, that's just a, a, sort of an extra added bonus in addition to the programs we run in the afternoon. So it's been a real joy to have them come in the morning to be able to do that. We uh, had a conversation about art and its value, and I've said this before, but the idea of these boys and girls creating something out of absolute nothingness, out of a void, and what you'll see is filling that void. These boys and girls will go on to, to pursue jobs that don't even exist yet. The rules of the game haven't even been made yet. And so for them to be able to step into something like this and say, we can take something that's blank and fill it with color, with story, with life, bodes well for them in the future, tackling the future that we don't even know what it looks, it looks like yet, nor do we know the rules of the game. Um, again, the reason that we love theater is everybody wins. Uh, I'm just trying so hard to hold it together. <laughs> uh, I already introduced Karen. Uh, Karen uh, West was the person who believed in this years ago when we came to her after our napkin scratches. Um, she was the brave one. And in our first meeting, she said, Ted, this looks great, but you're gonna need a budget line for a bus. And I said, Karen, why do I need a bus? And she said, Ted, because many of these families who you're talking about helping and letting come to play on the playground don't have cars. And it was that moment in her office that had lopped across her desk and landed right here. And I got back on the phone with Mark and Dan and the entire program became clear. And it's been our privilege to be involved with this for six years and watch that roll on and on and on. And driving that bus the first three years myself <laughs> was one of the greatest joys of watching in the rear view mirror as the boys and girls would sing on the way home um, as uh, the songs of the shows of the year. Um, this, uh, we, we mentioned before, this runs on heart and runs on soul. It also runs on ideas on napkins.